test, test, test. We have viewers. Hello. Hi, Dixie Bell. <laughs> Hi, Zan. We have it's either Tamara or Tamara. Um, I hope I got at least one of those tries right um, from East Texas. Hello. Thank you guys so much for joining me. As you jump on, say hi and let us know where you're tuning in from. We like to see it. Hello, everybody. Okay. Sorry, you guys are making me smile. Okay, let's get started. So we are live here on the Dixie Bell page, my page, which is Lotus Siri Designs, both of which are on Facebook. And we're actually live today on YouTube. Um, so I've stepped up my tech game. So uh, hopefully we have a nice uh, lesson, I guess, um, for you guys today. I'm going to be working with silk paints. Um, again, as you guys jump on, let me know where you're tuning in from and say hello. We have Carol from Arizona. I always get happy when somebody says they're from Arizona. Um, that's where I am. So, okay. So I'm Bianca owner, artist of Lotus Theory Designs. I am also a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint Company. Today, we're gonna to be using silk all-in-one mineral paint. I did a live on this paint uh, maybe two or three lives ago. And I'm doing one again. So that is this paint here, it's new, okay? It's only available in Australia, New Zealand, and very soon to be Europe. I know it's not here in the States, you guys, I, I do apologize, but I promise it's going to be worth the wait. Um, there's just some logistics and everything that needs to happen before it can be offered to um, us in the States here at home. That doesn't mean I can't show you how to use it in the meantime. Um, as I go along, I'm going to be uh, telling you what colors I'm using, but I'll also give you the classic chalk mineral paint um, alternative that you can use to the, the color that would be, um, I guess, most similar to what I'm using here. So don't fret, there is recourse. Hello, everybody, lots of hellos. Okay, so let me show you what I'm working with. I've got this dresser, cute, right? And so far I have an ombre look on it. I'll tell you the colors in just a sec. Let me see if I can give you, okay. So I guess I got that photo in there twice. Okay, so imagine this without the um, moldings on the side. So that's what it looked like before. I did go ahead and add those moldings to it. I used casting resin and a mold just to kind of give it a little bit of flair. And then that's just me applying them. I'm using glue and you guys, a little tip. I actually also use nails to reinforce it um, just to be sure that it doesn't fall off. <laughs> Not that they should, but, you know, I'm just that person. I like to take the extra step to ensure that, you know, my efforts will be long lasting and, and whoever ends up with this piece is happy. So that brings us to this point. I am also going to be using a transfer, but you guys will just have to wait and see what transfer that is. So today I'm going to build the base with you guys. Like I said, I do have an ombre going on. Um, I just used my sprayer. Okay. So I did the base in Hampton Olive. That's the greenish color that you see here. And the top portion is just done in salt water. Okay. So I guess, actually, this is a tough one. Hampton Olive doesn't quite have an equivalent. Um, but I would say maybe holy guacamole. I'm looking up at my shelf in case you're wondering what I'm doing. Um, holy guacamole or collard greens, or maybe a mix of both could easily create a color very similar to this. Or if you don't mind a slightly lighter shade than this, you could do um, Spanish moss or dried sage. 
one of them. They're a little far away and I'm not wearing my glasses. Okay. Salt water equivalent might be drop cloth um, or even fluff, actually. Fluff might be the better alternative to this. So that's what we see here. Okay. I also pulled off the shelf. I have Serenity. Um, I've got Tide Pool. I also grabbed Harbor. <laughs> and I have Wharf. <laughs> so I don't know how I'm going to be using these colors. I kind of sort of have a vision, but if you've watched me live before, you know that I don't really commit to anything. I just go with the flow. So I'm just going to take a second to open these colors up. And in the meantime, if you guys have questions, don't be shy. Drop them in the comments. Let me know what you think. Yes, Brittany, finishing nails. So Brittany is asking um, when I said that I secure my molds using nails as well as glue. Yes, little tiny finishing nails. So you don't even notice that they're that they're there. Thanks, Megan. Megan thinks my tech game is on point. <laughs> oh, Nicole likes my curls. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> so funny. Growing up, I wish I had straight hair, and now I am so grateful. Still opening paint, you guys. Just a sec. Hi, Brandy. Oh, Diane wants to know what's the difference between silk and chalk. So in a nutshell, it's not chalk-based. Um, it's more of a, it's not enamel, but I, I feel that it performs more like an enamel. Um, not quite as porous, pure as hard, um, great for cabinets and high traffic areas, has a nice velvet finish um, on the top, doesn't require top coat, has built-in stain, um, adhesion, great or great adhesion, stain blocker, sorry. And uh, yeah, it's really good stuff. I personally, if I were going to do my cabinets, it would be with this product. All right, so like I said, I'm going to try to keep an eye on the comments. Let's get started. Less talk, more paint. Let's bring you in a little bit closer. Okay, so I'm just going to do a rough blend. I have a couple of mini brushes here. I'll show you those in just a sec. Let me turn it this way a little bit so I get less of a shadow. <laughs> Thank you. Sherry also likes my curls. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, so um, for the rough, grungy blend that I love to do, I tend to gravitate toward Dixie Bell's synthetic mini brush. Okay, so the type of brush that I choose is going to be very dependent on what I'm doing. Again, I'm going for a rough blend, so that is the brush that I am reaching for. And I'm just going to start blending and see what we get. Let's see what unfolds, you guys. When I go live, half the time, I don't really have, like I said, a big plan in mind. I don't really have like an end game in my head as far as what this is going to look like. So part of the adventure is kind of see it, getting to see it um, come to life alongside me and seeing what happens. So I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm gonna work my way up, okay? Right now I'm using, I just put Hampton Olive on my brush. That's the same color that you have there. And I'm just gonna go in a random, crazy, nonsensical motion. And why not add in some of this wharf color? Okay. So I'm just kind of, like I said, doing a rough blend. I, my brush is going in several different directions. This is my favorite way to paint. Okay, I'm just alternating between the two colors. I have Wharf and I have Hampton Olive. Yes, Dixie Bell says, silk cures in 21 days. The chalk mineral cures in 30 days. That is true. Thank you for uh, jumping in, Dixie Bell, and adding some more knowledge about it. Yeah, Cheyenne thought that this was a shadow at first. It does kind of look like that on the screen. 
All right, so where was I? Back to my wharf. Now, keep in mind, I did say I was going to add a transfer over all of this, okay? And I still have four other colors open. So we're going to see. We're going to see what happens here. And just kind of working my way up, seeing if I like it. Again, my brush is going in several different directions. Notice I'm not using water. I could use water, but I'm not. And that's because the type of blend that I'm going for is just a bit more grungy, a bit more messy. I've taught on this style a couple of times in the past. Um, usually I get comments like, ooh, I don't know. Um, and then people see the finished product. They're like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. So if you do want to try this at home, kids, just trust the process. That's the advice that I'm going to give you. So by laying down my base coat, okay, so I actually did two coats of each color. So using my sprayer, but you can totally brush it on, I sprayed the white in two coats, okay, and then I sprayed the green over it. I'm not too worried about this, this hot mess of a seam here because it's all going to get covered up anyway. By spraying my base coat or laying my base coat down prior to doing the blending, basically instead of blending, I like to do three coats in total. Instead of blending three coats, I'm only going to have to blend one. So for me, it just makes it a little bit faster of a process, less tedious. Um, I tend to like to work smarter, not harder. Um, but again, it's really the decision that you make as far as if you're going to lay flat, basic coats like this and go over them or blend all three coats is really just going to depend on your style, the results that you're looking for. You know, I'm just teaching you the way that I do it. There really is no right or wrong. There is multiple ways to skin a cat. All right. So I think it's time to reach for another color, okay? I'm not necessarily committed here. There's a chance I'm gonna add some more of the wharf in. There's a chance I won't. I'm just gonna start working my way up and see what I'm getting. And hopefully, hopefully um, it resembles the little bit of a vision that I have in my brain. So the next color I'm pulling is called Serenity. Okay. Sorry, my hand is covering the label, but there it is. Oh, a possible equivalent might be Savannah Mist, Vintage Duck Egg. Either one of those are going to be pretty similar. Not exact, but pretty similar. Okay, so got a new brush. And I'm just going to start working my way up. So don't be afraid when you're using this technique to play with your brush, okay? If you have music going, sometimes this is my like behind the scenes, what I like to do. You guys, if you guys were fly on the wall, I think that you would be entertained. What really goes on behind the scenes that I don't show you when I go live. But I might do my brush to the beat. So I might do a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. <laughs> So my point is have fun with it. I sure do. What kind of music do you guys listen to? I listen to everything, but it really just depends on my mood. Lately, I've been on a old school R&B and hip hop kick. I jumped back to Wharf, by the way. So, you know, the stuff that I grew up with has been playing in my, my garage and very loudly. So my 17 year old is getting rather acquainted with the 90s and the music trends. See what I said when I said, ah, I'm not too worried about that seam, it's gonna blend, okay? It totally is, not too worried about it. 
So right now I'm jumping between Wharf, that's the greenish color. I've got, no, I'm sorry. Hampton Olive is the greenish color. Wharf is this grayish with a hint of green to it color. I've got Serenity, that's the light blue, okay? And I think I'm gonna add in a little bit more of the Wharf here. Now I intentionally chose colors that were gonna be pretty similar, okay? They're not super contrasted because I didn't really want to make it complicated for you guys. Um, the more contrasted the color, the more opposite the color, the harder it is to blend. So if you're just starting out blending, might be a good idea to pick colors that are within the same color family or are complementary on the color wheel. Okay, a little bit more, and then I'm gonna uh, jump and come up here. And you might notice, I don't know if you guys noticed, let me check your comments in just a sec, by the way. I tend to forget. Um, this is taped off. So this is all sanded down to raw wood. I'm actually gonna use some no pain gel stain on the top. I'm not sure what color yet, but when you see it finished, it'll have a beautiful stained top as well. A little bit more. See, like I said, I wasn't sure if I was going to commit to leaving this as it is. Sometimes you just need to step away and come back. And now I'm adding in a little bit more of the Wharf and Hampton Olive here. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Let's introduce, should we do Tide Pool? Let's do Tide Pool. That greenish Color uh, mint and julep might be close in the classic, classic chalk mineral line. And uh, that's probably the closest, although this is just a skosh more blue than the mint julep, which is more on the green end of the spectrum. Yes, Lisa, so I'm using silk paint, okay? And um, Lisa wants to know what kind of paint I'm using. Um, it's a new paint by Dixie Bell, only available in Australia and New Zealand and soon to be in Europe. And eventually it will make its way here to the U.S. So in the meantime, I am just showing you guys how I'm building interest. And by the time it reaches the U.S., you guys will be pros. Oh, let me move my mouse, you guys, so I can see. Okay. Um, Evelyn wants to know, do you have to sand down to use no pain gel stain? And I'm going to talk to you about that as I continue on. So I did say I was going to introduce tide pool, and I'm also probably going to bring back in a little bit more of the white, which is the salt water. No, you do not have to sand down all the way to raw wood to use the no pain gel stain. That's kind of the beauty of no pain gel stain. Easy to use. Okay. Does not require you to sand it all the way down. I did. Okay. My reason being is there was a lot of gouges and indentations and just where, you know, the wear and even some finish was removed off of the top of this piece just from use. And so I went ahead and I sanded it down to remove all of the imperfections so that when I do stain it, it's not, um, it's more consistent. And I guess it just looks like a newer top versus one that's been used but coated over with stain. Totally your choice. Okay, kind of loving Tide Pool. Tide Pool's pretty. I'll try to move this a little bit. Mm-hmm. Kind of digging it. Bring the salt water down. That's the white color. Bring a little bit of that in, and I'm going to bring a little bit of the salt water down. By keeping my brush dry, and again, you guys, I know I'm using silk, but you can totally use this technique with the chalk mineral line. I do it all the time. But the cool thing about keeping the brush dry and not wetting it is that I'm getting some, um, I guess, dry brush type effects, which is adding some character to the piece. Bring a little bit, yeah, blend that in a little bit more. And I actually had Harbor. I might introduce some Harbor. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and use the same brush for the Harbor. 
and see how I like it, as I did with the tide pool. Tide pool. And I'm just kind of alternating between those colors. Okay, so we've got salt water, that's the white. Again, the equivalent might be fluff. We've got harbor, which is this blue. Um, actually, a really good equivalent for that would probably be either Dixie Belle blue or I think pure ocean. No, I'm gonna go with Dixie Belle blue. So this blue here, the equivalent in the chalk line would be uh, Dixie Belle blue. Where was I? I'm just kind of jumping back and forth. Don't be afraid to cross-contaminate your brushes for this style anyway, which is what I just did. Add in a little bit more tide pool. And I'm also gonna to start to bring it down into this a little bit. And I've had enough of the floor, so I'm going to jump onto my uh, stool here. All right. Back to the salt water. Oops, just made a mess. Too much paint, which actually... <laughs> See, I love when accidents like that happen. I totally just put paint on, it's splattered everywhere, but I can see like the paint flecking. So I might be paint flecking later. I think I want a little bit more of the white here. Kind of dab the brush in there a little bit, get some cool effects. Mm-hmm, kind of like it. Kind of looks like a water colored canvas. So let's see if I'm missing any questions. Yeah, Lisa, it does look like a camouflage pattern. You know what, Kim, I have not tried that yet. Kim wants to know if you can use the chalk mineral paint with the silk paint, do they blend well together? I have not tried that yet, but I do intend to, and I've been using the silk paint now for a little bit, getting to know it. And I do believe that I would be able to blend them together. Um, the blend might be different than if I were using uh, exclusively silk or exclusively chalk mineral. I'm not sure um, if that is the case that it will be different, but I'm just saying it might be. So if you get a hold of it and you wanna try it yourself, you know, just be ready. But it's something that I do intend to try in the future. So I'll have to get back to you on that. Yep, so Dixie Bell says you can use them in conjunction with each other, but we do not recommend actually mixing the two paints together. So what they're saying is yes, you can use, you can blend them together, but it's probably not a good idea to mix the colors together to create one paint. All right, so let's keep going. Where was I? Come back to the salt water here. Looks kind of beachy, huh? And let's throw in some tide pool. Too many brushes in my hand. Jumping back over to harbor, that's the brighter blue. And let's bring back in more of the salt water. Again, a nice equivalent to salt water I'm thinking might be fluff. Add a little bit more over here.
Okay. Let's jump back down to, actually, let's put in some morph there. That little corner there, let's blend that in a little bit better. And again, don't be afraid to um, change directions with your brush. You know, dab a little bit of paint in places using your brush. Don't be afraid. Again, because I'm not using water, I'm able to do this without getting runny paint. I'm just adding little bits of, I guess, accents. Whereas if my brush were sopping wet, I would be getting a totally different effect. So I'm just going to scoop back for a sec, take a look, see if I like my progress. I think what I'm going to end up doing now that I've got this laid out, bring it back a little bit. Okay, so oops, I want you to see the whole thing. Okay, so I can say that I'm probably going to end up blending this in a little bit nicer. Okay, I can see bringing down just a little bit of this color, these colors, just a little bit into here, a little bit more. I'm probably gonna go ahead and add hmm, maybe a little bit more wharf in here to get more of a contrast between the green and the gray color. And notice I'm touching it. It's cool to touch, okay? So that means it's still wet, but it's touchable. And I did this, what, 10 minutes ago? So it dries pretty quick. Um, yeah. And again, keep in mind, I did say that I have a transfer that's gonna go over this. So let me see if you guys have any questions. See, Kelly's from New Zealand. Does that mean that you're there now? You should go out and buy some today, Kelly. <laughs> okay, Dixie Bell, Edward Brush Hands. <laughs> you might be on to something. <laughs> Yeah, Karen. Okay, so Dixie Bell said not to miss the silk paint. Well, I, yeah, I think Dixie Bell did. Somebody somewhere said that you shouldn't, but I have, okay? Because I don't follow rules very well. I do what I want. So um, you can try it. I'd have to look into why they said not to, okay? Um, let me get off this topic before I say something and get in trouble. <laughs> encourage you guys to be rebels and, and break the rules right yes exactly a stormy sky dixie bell so lisa wants to know what look am i going for i'm going for this um and yeah i actually was going for a stormy sky look in my brain okay and and, and that's because of the transfer that i have in mind to put over it that i'm not showing you at this time that's the one part i'm going to keep secret um to me a stormy sky might complement the transfer more. So right now I'm just kind of showing you the base getting laid. Are there any other questions? I'm going to just blend this in just a little bit more on camera and then we will, I will release the class. Okay. So let's do, let's bring in some of the wharf. And I'm just going to kind of alternate Oops, need a little bit more paint on my brush. Yeah, I'm just jumping between my colors here. Let's go with Harbor. So if you guys follow me, okay, I recently posted a purple and green and light blue piece. It was an ornate buffet and I posted it to my page. And I got a lot of questions. How did you achieve that? This technique is how I achieved that. So I'm just going to do just a little bit more on camera with you guys. And then I will check the comments. And then I will bid you farewell. Okay, I can live with that for the sake of um, 
wanting to find a stopping point, okay? Let me just set my brushes down and dab the sweat off my face behind the camera because I am in Arizona. <laughs> so flipping hot here. It's supposed to cool off next week. Like 15 degrees cooler. I can live with that. And let me just get my paints back up here so I don't kick them over. Okay. So, any questions? Julie wants to know what finish does silk produce? It is flat. Um, as far as like the touch, it doesn't have a chalk, chalky feel, so it's going to be a lot flatter, a lot smoother. Um, kind of like, I guess, like a, a velvety feel is the best way that I think. To describe it, as far as the sheen, it's going to be, well, pretty, pretty flat. Not quite as matte as the chalk mineral line. Um, I'd say a cross between matte and eggshell. So it's not quite as sheeny as eggshell, but maybe just a step below. Hope that helps. Okay, here we go. Good. Dixie Bell says, we don't recommend using a lot of water because then it can affect the pigments. However, using a small mist of water here and there should be okay. But you don't blend it uh, with water like you do the chalk mineral line. Okay, that's a really good answer. Thank you for answering that, Dixie Bell. <laughs> Level two. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. Like Things are funnier in my head than they are actually. Yeah, okay. Yes, Sherry wants to know, can you use the moonshine metallics over the silks? Sure, you sure can. I'm trying to think, have I done it? I did a piece. Ooh, I don't think I have it in here. Darn, I don't. I don't have it loaded, the pictures. I did a piece in silk, and I even blended it with the same blending process um, with the patina paint line. I did not use the patina spray, but I was able to create the same type of texturized uh, blend using all silks, and then I did blend in bronze patina paint which is going to be pretty similar as far as the consistency to the moonshine metallic. So yes, you can. Silk line carries a total of 20 Hampton style colors. Okay. So that's what's available on the market now. Hampton style, meaning these um, softer colors. Okay. White's probably not a good example. They're very, very beautiful. And very quickly, I actually do have some pictures in here. Here's um, one of the other colors. Ah, let me get that comment off of there. So sorry. Okay, so that's conch, which is what you see here. Um, this is black sands to give you another example of another color. Um, that's white cap. That is their whitest white. And here is um, really an apothecary style DVD case using a compilation of, I feel like there was 12 colors on that. All of those were silk. So hopefully that helps you to get a visual. And correct, Bethany, you're okay. It is not available in the US yet, but it will be. Dixie Bell is working day and night to see to it that we here in the States get our hands on this amazing paint. So it, it will come. There's just some obstacles because of the current circumstances of the world um, as far as getting everything that they need to be able to mass produce to us here in the States. But it will come, I promise, and it'll be worth the wait. Okay. I think that that pretty much answers the questions. If you're watching this on a replay, okay, um, or say that you have a question right now, go ahead and drop it. I will come back and I'll check the, um, the comments. I'll see if you have any questions. I'll come back and check them once. But if you're watching from my page, go ahead and drop any comments you want because I get my notifications and I can see them and answer them a lot easier. Um, I will post this finished piece eventually, probably next week. Um, hopefully I can get it done today or at least the paint base laid um, so I can figure out my next step, which is typically artistic embellishments of some sort. Um, and then I still have to stain the top. So, um, so we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully it looks amazing and you guys are impressed by the time it's done. I will be back. Next Thursday, 3 o'clock Eastern, which is 12 o'clock Phoenix time here, Mountain Standard Time. 
and we'll do something different then. I don't know what that's going to be. Um, hey, if you have any ideas, if there's something that you guys want to learn or you want to learn um, specifically from me, maybe I've done something, you're like, how come she never teaches on that? Drop that in the comments. Um, you know, having your content requests gives me ideas. And, and I definitely want to make sure that our time here is spent well and that you're learning what it is that you want to learn. So other than that, um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I do appreciate you. And I will see you next week. Thanks. Bye.